Hello and welcome to YHTV. I'm Christina Suzuma, your host for this new program, Flowing into Awareness with Visionary Anatara. Anatara has been a part of Yoga Hub faculty since 2010. She is an intuitive counselor with an emphasis on life awareness. Anatara has been offering intuitive readings, which she calls angel listening and spiritual counseling for over 25 years to clients throughout the U.S., Canada, and Europe. Hence why we felt that this would be a wonderful time, bi-weekly, for Anatara to share what is flowing within and all around her. Welcome, Anatara, to your show. <laughs> Thank you, Christina, for making this making this possible and making the flow of awareness happen in this way. The one of the things for me in in my practice, in my practice of counseling people both intuitively and and instinctively, and and just in listening to to people, is that I have I have insights and I have awarenesses of. What it is that seem to um, bother us as people or plague us as individuals, and I see all the time where it is that we miss the most important the most important elements of what our lives are all about. So the flowing into awareness is about flowing into an awareness of who we are, an awareness of our lives, and an awareness of how we as individuals and as a and as a species literally fit into the earth the cosmos and and everything else uh so flowing to me is about being is about being present and being present can mean so many different things in what way do we make ourselves present in what way are we present and available to the images and the messages and the people and the thoughts and all of the other universal inferences that that flow into us at all, all times. And recently in working with, with clients, I have found that depending on what we believe about what we are literally capable of doing and or what we're capable of being, that those belief systems that we that we hold on to and that we use to describe ourselves have almost everything to do with where we get to. And when I say where we get to, I mean, uh, you know, how how expansive we can be in our own creativity, how expansive we can be in expressing our love, uh, how expansive we can be in pulling together all the resources we need to do whatever job we have. So what I'm really saying is that our belief systems control all of that. And our belief systems either help us utilize the, the most um, creative parts of ourselves or they prevent us from using those creative parts. And so it, it just seemed like a, a really good place to, to sort of start from or to launch from in terms of, of how we get to know who we are, where we're going, even where we want to go. So if I think about a belief system, I, I may have a, I may have, there may be a few things that I would use to describe myself or to, I would use to assign identity to, identity to myself. And those are almost always beliefs of some kind. And so one of those things might be I'm a woman. So I, I was born a woman. I believe I'm a woman. Uh, but it is a belief system about myself. It is a belief structure about myself. Uh, I am a grandmother. I believe that to be so about myself. Um, I'm not very tall. <laughs> I, believe, <laughs> I believe that I'm fairly short. <laughs> and, and if I leave the belief in a sort of a factual form, then being short is okay. If I think to myself, boy, I, I believe that I'm too short to be on a competitive volleyball team, that may make me start to limit what, <clears throat> what, what, my, what the possibilities are for me in my life. And that, that's a really simple example. And maybe I don't want to be a volleyball player, but if I thought that I wanted to be or had an inkling uh, desire to be able to play with the ball and play with a team that way, believing that I was short, too short, 
might change that for me. Mm-hmm. So, so that, so that's a concrete example. But, but the way it plays out for us in our regular daily lives, especially in relationships, is that we may we may think and therefore believe that uh, we don't speak well. So therefore, we're we're believing that we don't know how to get across what our needs and desires are, and we believe that we can't form our words in a in a sensible way. So perhaps that makes us believe that no one will understand us. And as we circulate that simple belief, that judgment about ourselves, we can start to shut down how we interact with mm-hmm. other people. We can start to shut off what we might be able to receive from someone because we believe that even if we did understand something that they told us, maybe we wouldn't be able to explain what we felt about it. So really our, our belief systems, when they're, when they're being closed minded, when they're, when they're in a, in a sort of a, I'll I'll use the word negative, when they're in a negative state, when they're, when they are biased in a way that doesn't allow us to be everything we can be, it, it forms the, the manner in which we relate to everything. And those belief systems form the, the, the information that we gather. And frequently, we are, are living a life that, that could be so gentle and simple and easy and, and even joyful. Not that joy is the only thing that we need to have, but it could be very, it could feel safe to us. It could feel vibrant. It could feel that there was this, a beautiful exchange with life, but there's something about us that makes us not allow that because we believe we're not good enough, or we believe we're incapable, or we believe that it's just not possible. That's feeling that okay about life is not all right for us. Uh, so when I, when I look at where belief systems come from, these personal beliefs that we carry about ourselves, and we can extend these beliefs to everything. You know, we all have opinions and beliefs about everything around us and the people around us. But if we're looking just at ourselves, how do we, how, where do these belief systems come from? Well, you know, was it a parent or a teacher who once said to us, oh, that's not good enough. I, I don't like what you did. Or you need to change the color on that drawing that you did. Or someone said to us, you're stupid. Why, why don't you understand this? Or a very important adult or loving person in our lives seemed to be ignoring us. So we take those things on and we reverse them and then project that into the way we relate to things and into the way we perceive things. So one of the one of the directions that I've been heading with um, in, in my practice, in my work lately, has been to allow people to find the place inside them that feels the most like them. We all have some some sense that that in a particular moment we feel really good or we feel really whole or we feel really safe um, it's a time when our defenses are down it's a time when we feel like there's nothing that we need to defend ourselves against it's a time when we don't feel like we need to prove anything um, these are moments of just presence a moments of a perfect flow of awareness with whatever is happening with the environment around us, with the thoughts in our minds, with even the texture of our skin that says to us, this feels perfect. And in those places, however it is that they occur for you, is the real information about who you are. It's the real information about who I am. It's the place where I can relax and just be. And as I relax in my presence, in in the simplest of awareness of what's of what's happening, what's going on. The belief systems that I've been carrying, and that have been charging and demanding certain interactions from me, they shift, and they're not as powerful, and they're and they're not as as omnipresent. In a way, we we step out of, we step back from, we step um, into a into a divine place, 
where the judgment isn't happening, where the expectations aren't happening, where those those internalized belief systems and voices are not telling us where to go. And and if I have a of a something that I really would love people to have as a sense of their own, it's that these places that have seemed hidden, these places that have seemed um sometimes sort of arbitrary, unclear, not known, distant. They are so close to the surface of who you really are. And they are so close to the to the surface of your normal behavior realms, your normal behavior patterns, that it doesn't take very much to to still yourself and to reach beyond the superficial and take take part in that essence that is really you mm. and and that's I, I find i find that it's very very easy actually to point out um in, in a very short period of time to to individuals and even to myself when i get caught up and lost that my essence is right here my essence is not hidden it's not forbidden it's not something i need to hide it's right here it's right here all the time mm. Mm. beautiful anatara and so much of uh, and, who we are and what we do are as you say is built up on what has happened to us and our experiences and really the assumptions of what is being said to us and our perceptions of what that might be and yet you know, from coming from the other end, it may not seem as such. So all this layering effect now is uh, has caused us to sort of sometimes shy away from what is real, which is what's inside us. That's what I'm hearing that you're saying. Yeah. So that's a, that's a beautiful, beautiful. Um, um, uh, <laughs> you put that together very perfectly. <laughs> you've made it. You've made it. You've said it with fewer words. You've said it in a in a concise way, and. The, what what strikes me from what you just said is that these concepts that we have created about ourselves and about others and about our own life stream and about our abilities, what we're good at, what we're not good at, the those concepts can be something that boosts our ability to move forward and those concepts can be something that shut us down. And what I'm looking for in myself and what I'm looking for in the direction of assisting others is to understand the layers, understand the overlap, understand the essence that is that is bubbling under the surface and wants to rise through and be part of part of the daily expression of who you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Anatara, for our listeners right now, what how would you say because there there's so much has just been spoken? And mm -hmm. without overwhelming oneself, what would their yeah. first steps be, would you say, to start to unravel this whole matrix? <laughs> okay. for, for, matrix is a perfect word for it. Um, okay, so there are two pretty simple things that go hand in hand that one can start to do to utilize your own, your own ability to, to know yourself. And the first one is to find a way in which to be still. And it, it doesn't have to be a, a particular form or concept of meditation, um, but to find a way to still yourself for five or ten minutes, during which time you can listen. And the stillness can be with music. It can be sitting outside. It can be in a hot bath. It can be lying on your bed. But it's the kind of stillness that allows your body to stop and allows you to start to really notice what's happening in your thoughts and what your mind is delivering to you. And in these minutes of becoming still, you'll find that some days the mind is very, very active. The, the messages are very active and that you'll find that there's a gradient there, that it, that it flows and moves into sometimes when there's much more silence and even stillness in your thoughts. So in the stillness, the second part of this is to start to be very observant about the sort of the nature of the thoughts that you're having, the nature of the beliefs that come and go for you. And, 
and how you feel about them. So you're going to, you're going to, there will be categories. There will be sort of bits and bunches of, of certain kinds of thoughts. Some thoughts may be about work. Some thoughts may be about family. Some thoughts may be about what a friend or a colleague said to you or what you thought they said to you or what you thought they were thinking about you. So just notice the themes of your life and through observing them, start to understand that they are they are a part of your life. They are parts of your life, but they aren't really the essence of who you are. Mm. And as you as you start to to tell yourself, I see all these elements of my my life. I see all these elements of my expression, and I also acknowledge that they are just elements of expression, but that they aren't who I really am. And when you give those things away to the meditation or to the stillness or to the quiet, then what replaces it are are the sensations and the feelings and the knowingness that comes through to you from your essence. And and this just grows. It 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 can escalate. But you do have to give it some some attention. You do have to give it some awareness. You have to put some time into it to have an effect (laughs) oh time (laughs) time is of the essence (laughs) definitely (laughs) well thank you so much Anatara um, for your moment of awareness and helping us to you know guiding us basically through these simple steps that we should take or we you know if you you choose to take it of course to start being able to unfold you know, from um, all these different levels, all these multi levels that we are, each and every one of us live within, and 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 we're all we're all in a very elaborately um, configured matrix, as you said before, of belief systems and needs and desires, and this is we, we can unravel it step by step in the way that I've just described, or with a little help from our friends. There you go, <laughs> <laughs> all part of that matrix. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Anatar, for your moment today. And we would like to thank each and every one of you for joining us here today. You know, we invite you to join us live every Tuesday at 10.30 a.m. Pacific Time and 1.30 Eastern Time for the Magical Medical Tour with our wonderful co-host, Dr. Glenn Woolman. Wednesdays for Trinity of Life at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, followed every other week with this new show, following Into Awareness with Anatara. You can also reach Anatara at myyogahub.com forward slash Anatara and on Twitter at Anatara and of course through her own site anatara.ca and that's spelled A-N-A-T-A-R-A dot C-A. Okay, so thank you again, Anatara, and we look forward to seeing you, each and every one of you again. Until next time, namaste. Namaste.